The Yellow Turban Rebellion was a large uprising that contributed to the end of the corrupt Han Dynasty. The common man was stepped on for far too long, losing land and pride all in the same breath. Thousands answered the call to arms, willing to put down their lives for the sacred cause, Gong Du included. Gong Du was originally a bandit leader from the Changsha province. He represents the Taoist virtue of frugality, and the land is his domain. Under his command are former soldiers, guardsmen, and redeemed nobles. The Yellow Turban Rebellion has a mix of adapted Han government buildings and their own unique structures, all improved by their three scrolls from the Book of Great Peace, a tome that refers to the three Taoist domains and contains verses of Taoist scripture. Gong Du is here to prove that the common man will be put down no longer. Gong Du really does begin in a very precarious position. And to let you know, Creative Assembly has allowed me to show off a bit of footage for Gong Du. And now we're going to go over a few bits of information pertaining to him. As you can see down here on the lower left hand corner, he's a veteran. And for a few unique effects from him, he gives plus 5 to military supplies in enemy territory. And plus 10% armor for all spear infantry, making him very good for your land soldiers, your infantry soldiers. Over on the top right, we can see here the Dominion of Gong Du. He's got increased campaign movement range. The guy will be hard to catch, and he'll be able to move quickly through these mountains over here where he begins at. And he does get increased loot from battles. It's all about raiding and looting, moving quickly and trying to avoid your much larger neighbors too. Over here, we have a unique feature in the form of a building, a guerrilla warfare military building chain that will give you more post-battle loot income and more military supplies meaning that you can then stay in enemy territory for longer periods of time. And over here, we've got the Liberate Stance. Whenever you use it, public order and enemy commanderies will steal food and reserves from the local region. Then over here, we have Guardians of the Land, a unique unit that you're able to use, a fantastic frontline unit that has good armor and is quite good in melee. Now we're going to play for a little bit in the campaign itself so that you can see what it's like. I'll be playing on a very hard difficulty. We cannot forget our good buddy, Jing Kai. Now let's move in. Here's where we begin, right by a Han Empire army. We'll have to be mindful of that threat. As you can see over here, we're surrounded by a lot of enemies who want to see us dead. We've got to be mindful of that as well. My job is to hit hard and to move quickly. We have only one location under our command right now. One copper mine belonging to Wu Du. There's a town not too far from me. The great part about playing a Yellow Turban is that whenever you find the Yellow Turban Rebellion, you're able to annex their buildings. Let's come over here now and fight a battle. Then later, we'll go take Wudu the town. Focus, but we need to go fight this battle. We'll show off a few units and fight it at night. When I fight it at night, my enemies lose 15 morale and their spotting ability will be diminished. Our battle is beginning right now. I'll go over our army format in just a minute. Zhang Kai is a veteran too. He has a move called Finding Fury that deals 15k splash damage. The guy is able to mix it up in a big pool of soldiers if you want him to. Gong Du begins with one with the land, a passive 10% speed buff. He also has one active ability in the very beginning called Desperate Cry. That is his active buff giving him 50% more melee charge bonus, base damage, and armor piercing damage. Right now, he's dueling the enemy leader, but we should probably go look at other affairs right now. You begin with a pretty good skirmishing army. You have three groups of horseback huntsmen. Clearly, they're very good at moving quickly and shooting down foes. Of course, if you need to, you can use them in melee to take down enemy archers. It's usually very effective. Beyond that, we have two groups of Yellow Turban Horsemen. Zhang Kai is currently leading them through the woods, as you can see out in the distance. And over here, we have one group of Guardians of the Land, our unique infantry unit, in addition to two groups of Yellow Turban Spearmen. A basic unit, but they all have shields. A good note about the Yellow Turban Horsemen, they have shields too, so if you need them to take a few shots before they get into combat, they can do so. But these are our Guardians of the Land. I love the lighting too. They're just kind of waiting in the trees right now while that duel is going on. 
If you ever want to see more information while you're in a cinematic mode, you can press the space bar and you'll see much more. Let's go finish up our fight before we head back into combat. He's about to win. The duels are rather powerful. If you win, that's one enemy leader gone. He's throwing the guy around like a toy. Gong Du is very good in melee combat. The fight is about to be over. He won't be here for much longer. And then we can go focus on the actual tactics that are happening right now. I just wanted to show you a duel and how that plays out. And finally, he's gone. Now, let's have a look at what we're doing over here. My horsemen are charging in everywhere. It's a rather tiny force where they have few units that can really stand up to you. So your first battle is meant to be fairly easy. You just get to ride them down. They also get to shoot them while they're riding them down too. This is nothing but a bunch of archers and a few groups of infantry. But now they have fallen and we've lost maybe 20 soldiers. chased on every single unit if we choose to, just to make sure that they're not going to bother us in the future. Bunkai is leading his men into combat. He's a pretty good commander too. But that battle is now over. In the future I won't focus on a duel like that again, at least not as long. I just wanted to show you that fight because we're only fighting a minor skirmish at best. Now let's get back to the map and find out what we need to do. Let's take replenishment. We didn't lose too many, but for what little I did lose, I would like to keep my army full. Embarking. We lost only 20 soldiers, too. One mission completed. They've given me a new ancillary, a full maze for Gong Du, and he's gained more experience as well. We have a new mission. The powerful are useful to Gong Du and the Yellow Turban cause. He wants me to recruit a Yellow Turban Spearman Captain which is a retinue that you're able to bring together without having a named officer. And here is a new challenge issued. They want me to capture and occupy any settlement. Resist now that I can do. Unfortunately, on turn one, I'm unable to recruit Bet anything. I'll have to wait for my following turn. Let's come right over here. I could attack it, but I'm going to take it. Let them join me. Now they can be integrated into my faction will be given 25 faction support. Now we have a lot more money. Even though it's a tough beginning, you get a few tools in the very start. All right, we need to construct or upgrade a building in order to make some money. Let's have a look. I'm currently building copper pits in order to make more. Later, I'll try to upgrade whatever I can. I currently have a town and public workshops. Every single town has a few buildings you're able to build inside of it. Beyond that, you have tertiary locations that are very important to that commandery. So in my case for Wudu, I've got a silk trader over here, owned by Mating, and I have a copper mine. Once I have all of that, I'll unite the commandery. Let's keep on looking. Over here are my beginning ancillaries and a few that I earned through some missions. We can give those to other characters. Let's have a look at what characters I do have in my court. So we do have many court positions. We have local leaders, great commander, great healer, great learned one, Lord of Heaven, Lord of the Land, and Lord of the People. I only have two other officers right now. In time, more will join my cause. So you can see we're rather isolated in the very beginning. That will change later on. And here's a bunch of reforms we're able to pick up. More enlightenment, satisfaction, character experience, you get a lot of tools to really help yourself out. I think for now, what I would like to pick up would be more campaign movement range. It'll take me four turns, but then we'll have it. Then we'll be a bit better off. And we need to keep on looking around right now. There's not too much more for me to do. Wang Du has now left. He'll be doing his own thing. And I think pretty soon we're going to head after Ma Ting. It really depends on who's a bigger threat to me right now. If we look at our diplomacy screen, we're fighting Dong Zhuo, Ma Ting, Han Sui, the Han Empire, and Zhang Lu. No matter where I go, I have foes to fight. So I'll probably want to build up, then move quickly through these lands. Han Zhang might not be a bad idea. But Ma Ting is also very close. Well, we'll see in time. 
Before we end our turn, let's go over to our characters. You can look at Gong Du, the master of the land. He's a general, our general. You can see a few personal effects for Gong Du. And of course, position effects too. There's a lot there. And over here, he's got a title rank of speaker. We don't want to really pay him. And he provides more character experience faction wide. That increases over time, as you can see here. One day, he'll be able to become the Yellow Sky Emperor. That's our goal. Okay, for followers, why don't we take, for right now, a Scholar? We'll get even more experience, meaning that we can level up quickly. I have no accessories. I do have a mount. Ah, here we go. That gray thoroughbred has a lot of mass. And you can see that we'll have a higher chance of evading capture post-battle. And a few other benefits, too. We haven't leveled up yet. Let's go look at Jeng Kai. Jeng Kai, you could take a traitor. I won't be sending you out on assignment right now, though. My other officer I'll have join me as well, so for now I'll only use it for that plus two to cunning. Now he has more cunning, and now we can end our turn. Mating has decided to attack us, so now we're about to commence with our Siege of Wudu. Fortunately, I won't be able to recruit any new units, and our garrison is quite small. But we'll do our best. Ma Ting has horsemen. We're looking at some infantry. Fortunately, his army is not very large. The battle here is going to be quite challenging. Our enemies are much closer to this town than we are. And they're being led by Ma Ting, who has two other officers with him, including Pang Dei. We look over here. They've got some very good horsemen. These elite horsemen are immune to fatigue, meaning that no matter what, no matter what stage of the fight you're in, they're going to be able to just stay alert at full strength too. Whenever we tire out, our charges become weaker. For them, they just charge and charge and charge. Our men are running! The spineless cowards! Here they come now. My only shot is to tank out at least most of their leadership and to try to hold on. No matter what, I've got to rush my soldiers in, which will be quite costly. If you look at where I'm at, I'm on the other side of the map right now, trying to move in as quickly as I can. It'll take a minute to get back over here, but we're doing our best. By the time I get there, we'll be very tired. If we were at full strength, if we were defending the town itself, we would have a much easier time, because we do have a lot of towers in this town. My little garrison is not at full strength, or they too could have held. Here they come. That's a lot of units all pouring in. A few were killed by the towers, but not nearly enough to make a huge difference. Now if they killed a lot of their horsemen, that would have been even better. Let's keep on looking now as we back up. Their leaders are all together. Go, go! My Make poor haste. units are just trying their best right now. Pretty soon, they'll all be in the square and the true battle will commence. My officers should reach this location first. My units are just making it into town now. Which means we've got to initiate our duel very, very soon. I really have no choice but to move my units out. I was hoping to get into the town square, but that wasn't very likely. Here comes Mating, already killing some of my soldiers. But one duel is already Bring happening. Down, it's time to see what we can do. Gong Du is much more powerful than Peng Dei. Peng Dei is going to be in for a world of hurt. These two will be fighting right over here, right now. Later, another duel is going to happen. Jeng Kai is quite powerful too. He'll be able to bring down the hammer. Speaking of, I need to give him a hammer. The biggest issue whenever you're rushing in is placement. I wasn't able to properly place my units where I wanted them to go. I had to rush in just to really hold on to this town. They've already taken towers from me. If they wanted to, they could have easily taken that town. Well, maybe I would have broken in at that point. I don't really know. My tank is still wandering. Here's another duel. Mating, you're going to lose a friend of yours very soon. While that fight is going on, you can see over here where I've got more units moving around. My spearmen have yet to reach this location. 
trying to move away. While we're doing some damage, it's not nearly enough. Those guys have some decent armor. They're a big issue for me. And over here, we can see that my leader is still fighting. He's about to win the battle, so we can watch it play out Destroy right now. Gong Du completely destroyed this guy. By command. Goodbye, Pong De. I hope you're not a friend of my thing, or he's going to be very, very angry. There's like a striker or two left. There we go. Oh man, that's really brutal. Wait, you cracked his neck? Mengdu, no you're really match. scary. Thankfully, there's a battle happening here, so we can watch anyway. I've only got a few locations where there's any fighting really going on. And it looks like we're winning another fight. After that, we can focus on troop movements. Trust me, we've got to keep on fighting for quite some time. And, is it over? Oh, not quite. She's back. Oh, she was back. Now it's over. Mating completely loses control. Evidently, we killed one of his friends. It's really a shame, Mating. If you didn't come over here, they would not have died. You can see an overview of the battle map right now. Gongdu is trying to kill these archers. G militiamen have moved in, making it a huge issue for me to stay there at night. If he was at full stamina, Maybe it would have been okay. Now Gong is moving to capture some towers. All the while, we have my officer still fighting on foot. I couldn't get him back on his horse. I've got some spearmen moving in right now. They're trying to make it over here to help me out. It's very hard to move through these towns whenever you have such large unit sizes. But they're still fighting. All in all, it's been a challenging campaign, and I've got to tell you, I'm really looking forward to playing a Yellow Terran campaign for that inherent challenge. They're not really for the soft of heart. <laughs> you need someone sturdy to play a, a Yellow Turban. My tank is still going for it. Some enemies are beginning to flee. Our officers are still fighting very hard. We killed two of theirs. No matter what, my tank is not going home with all of his friends. Some horsemen are now fleeing. And their archers are dying, too. It doesn't take much. Whenever you can reach them, they fall apart. As they well should. They're quite deadly, which is why they should be fragile. Over here, we can see their elite horsemen still fighting. That's how powerful they truly are. They're able to hold on their own so many of my own soldiers. Gong Du is ready to spend lives. He's ready to give his lives up so that we can have a better tomorrow. My Ting is finally fleeing, I believe. He's finally broken. The battle is now over. It was an intense fight, but we did it. We won the battle for Wu Du. That was a really close fight for me. Things could have been much worse. Thankfully, we were able to take out two of their leaders in that fight. They're dead now. Let's go over here and replenish your burden. For the greater good. You're going to need a lot of replenishment early on, or you're going to spend a lot of time trying to recuperate. But we won that battle. Now I'll finally have a turn to build up my army. Bring news Let's see what we have over here. Alright, Shuei, I would like for you to join me as well. Your rank two, Rush not bad. Now we have more units to help out. Though I do lack a lot of officers currently. To fill in other roles, of course. Here's my Jade Sickle. That provides eight cunning and eight satisfaction. You want everyone in your army to be satisfied. Right now, Shuei is not satisfied. Here's a Jade Sickle. He's feeling a bit better now. He's like, hey, you know what? I'm not as angry. What about you, Jenkai? Many of my officers here are not content. I'll have to find a way to please all of them. Gong Du and Ma Ting are now rivals. I killed a friend of his. That's one enemy killed. And Pang Dei is dead too, which is a shame. I would love to have hired him. But now he's gone. Let's go look at what we have over here. I'm still trying to upgrade my copper mine. 
I have the money for a lot of units. I suppose I should probably build up what I have right now. We can get a variety of archers. Peasant archers, yellow turban archers, and men of the forest. We could get more yellow turban horsemen. There's a lot of options here. I think for now, I would like to keep it pretty cheap. As cheap as I can. Yellow Sky Heralds, they're unbreakable, they're unruly, but I want two more of them. And we'll take Yellow Turban Warriors. There we go. Now my army is much, much larger. We'll take a few other cheap units. Because we don't have a lot of money, we need to keep it cheap for now. In the future, that could change. But I've done most of what I can do right now. As you can see, the battles are fierce, and here beginning is quite difficult because of how... Powerful your foes are. Mutti was actually fairly tough. Rank 3. Very powerful horsemen. Those guys were not easy. Fatigue immunity. Meaning that they're effective the entire time. They will not tire out at all. Now it's winter of 190. We have a law enforcer. Plus 2 to public order. Faction wide. Only if his character is a lord of virtue or faction leader. Well, he's my faction leader. I can't really give you anything else right now. I could replace your follower, but I like what you have currently. What about a different weapon? Currently, we're looking at 2k melee damage. But what about 3k? We have a much better pole mace. Not bad, master of the land. Okay, my army is currently building up. We can go after Ma Ting very soon. There are other enemies to worry about, though. That is true. I would like to spend a few turns replenishing. Then I should be ready for another fight, but I would like to unify my lands here in Wudu. Okay, let's end our turn. Even though we don't have a full army, we should have enough units right now to attack another enemy. And probably win. Let's go over here to the Silk Trader. As you can see, we can move very, very far. If we can get Mating now, oh man, that would be a great victory. Oh no, it's Dong Zhao. Not Dong Zhuo, but Dong Zhao. Hopefully these two will not move away, but I'm sure they will. I wonder what you're doing over here, Zhang Lu. Zhang Lu has got to come for me eventually. We've got over here Liu Yan. I'm not really worried about Liu Yan. Let him come down. What about my garrison? I've got a decent garrison. It's finally beginning to grow. One more turn, then I'll have my copper pits. One mission completed. Now I've gained a new ancillary, Book of Earth for Gong Du. Not bad. A new mission issued. Reach faction rank balanced. When I do so, I'll have a new character recruited and a lot more experience for Gong Du. I've completed one of my challenges. Faction development, proactive planning. A thousand miles journey begins with a foot. We have studied the scriptures and have taken our next step towards enlightenment. What shall we study next? Good to know. Now Gong Du has gone up in rank. And I've gained a tycoon. Hey, that's really good. I need to give that to some manner of administrator whenever I'm able to get one. Alright, there's my building. So let's keep on looking around. It's time for me to take that silk trader. And I would like a bigger garrison over in my capital or at least more money but for now let's build guerrilla warfare it'll give you more post battle loot income and more military supplies well the other idea when i think about it would be to get more replenishment forges are great let's take some forges right <laughs> yeah it's a lot of replenishment that i need and at level four gong do it's got a lot of abilities to look at we've got killing ground over here a great way to debuff our foes and to deal a lot of damage, but I need to carefully choose what I want here. Looking at more damage. And over here. Fatigue resistance for his own retinue. Now that can be handy as well. You know what? I'll take that. I want to make sure he's able to last any fight for a long period of time. But now we can take a little town. I don't need to fight the battle out. It's a very small garrison. Delegate, the people's voice cannot be which is silenced. just auto resolve. There's my money. I could just take the money and leave, Tony but I want this location. Now I have my entire commandery, but I have no officer to fill up a position. 
There's no one for me to hire either. I suppose I have you. He's a physician. Interesting. Yeah, I do have you. I just don't have the capability to assign a administrator yet, it seems. I mean, we can look again, but nope. No one there. Can't do it yet. Zero out of zero. Commandery secured. Now, Jinkai and Gong Du are friends. I feel like this should be a good location or place to leave off our campaign. I hope that you enjoyed this little preview. And to end it off, I want to go over a few buildings just to kind of show them off and to let you know what you'll be getting into. I think it's a great idea just so that you know what you have to really pick from. There's a bunch of unique building lines like over here where your religion, more enlightenment, more of a research rate. And that keeps on going up to level 5. We've got a headquarters too for more public order. Well, mine is one public order for adjacent enemy commanderies. It's a great way to have cheaper units but to also cause issues for your neighbors. And we have a temple for more enlightenment. Plus 3 to public order. And plus 5% from all sources. For your income anyway. That can go up to level 3. So those are a few really good buildings that you're able to utilize. Yeah, I've got copper and silk now, but I need other trade goods if I want to unlock other buildings in the future. I return. That is Gong Du. And look forward to my campaigns for Dong Zhuo. And also Cao Cao coming very soon. Lu Bu in Dong Zhuo's campaign will be for romance, whereas Cao Cao's campaign will be for records. Anyway, until then.